Welcome back. And now here with us we have Dr. Brian Calfano. This I, time that's right. being interviewed. I'm on the hot seat. <laughs> Nick's well, out of here. We are talking about the Senate race from last night. So we know Republicans retained the Senate and Democrats now have the House. What exactly does that mean? Well, it means that, number one, President Trump has to make nice with the party that he was essentially <laughs> excoriating over the last several months. That's the first thing from a national perspective. But I think it's interesting to keep in mind that our three Republican House members from our viewing area, Jason Smith, Billy Long, and Vicki Hartzler, for the first time, Jen, are now going to be operating in the House minority. They've spent their entire careers in the House as the majority party. Now they're going to be on committees where the chairperson is going to be a Democrat, and they're going to potentially have to author what are called minority reports, which means they're going to disagree with the Democratic majority on those committees in the House. They're going to have a different perspective on what ought to get done or in interpreting someone's testimony from a government department or a government agency. So they're going to have to find a way now to work without all of the levers of power they're used to being able to wield because they had the House majority leadership behind them and they had the House Speaker's office behind them. That's not going to be the case anymore. So I think it'd be interesting to see as we move ahead if any of those three change how they deal with the type of bills that they put forward mm -hmm. and with how they relate to President Trump. Do they double down, especially with Representative Long, who has been very friendly with the president? Do they double down on that friendship or do they step back a little bit and say, I'm going to take more of a low profile here because I want to try to get some bills passed that will benefit my district and I can't do that if it looks like I'm thumbing mm -hmm. the nose of the Democratic leadership in the House. So that's where they are going to see a challenge in terms of passing bills and how they, they were these bills or which bills they're sponsoring or supporting? All of the above, right? It's a cooperative effort when you get into Congress and want to try to get something done. This is why a lot of times you'll get campaigns that say, so-and-so has been in office this long and they haven't done anything. Well, part of that's not because they haven't done anything. It's because it's really hard if you tick off a lot of people to be able to collaborate once you lose the majority advantage in that chamber. It didn't happen for the Senate this time for the Republicans, they actually increased their majority. But again, now for House members who have spent their entire career dealing with being in the majority and being able to basically run roughshod over the Democrats, the tables are now turned. It's a different story than the, for the Senate. We have had a Democrat in that seat for two terms. Senator Claire McCaskill has been there for 12 years and now we see a shift. And as you mentioned yesterday when we were having this conversation, you said now we're going to have two senators who are Republicans. What does that mean for the state of Missouri having that change from that balance that we talked about, Repu one Republican and one Democrat, and now we have two Republicans? Well, for now it means a good thing for most folks living in the state because the president is likely to say, I like Missouri, right? Roy and Josh, they're my guys. I'm going to go out there a lot. I'm going to hold rallies. If there's an opportunity to spend money, say, on infrastructure for that I-70 corridor project to link St. Louis and Kansas City, I'm going to push federal government resources in that direction because it's going to be good for my political allies, Josh and Roy, right? He may have been less likely, the president less likely to say that if he thought it was going to benefit Senator McCaskill, who would have in office if she had won re-election. But I think the other ramification of all of this is the state Democratic Party continues to weaken. Because if you think about it, there really now is not a dominant Democrat in state office across all of Missouri government. I mean, you can look at Nicole Galloway as the auditor, but she really has kind of an apolitical job, right? So uh, there's not really anybody out there who is carrying the banner for the Democrats statewide. In fact, Crystal Quaid in House District 132 is just about the only Democrat we can have to talk to and have her in to discuss politics because she's it. So having McCaskill gone, at least for the next couple of years, is not a good thing for the Democratic Party in Missouri and not a good thing for those voters who want to support the Democratic Party. Now, Twitter was, of course, uh, yesterday very heated and a lot of people engaged, um, maybe even people who don't really follow elections, you know, being on, on Twitter with this uh, Senate race and several races across the country. Some people are already talking about 2020. They think, OK, we're done with 2018. Now it's just prep for 2020. Is that what we're going to be seeing for the next couple of years now, just a, a two-year campaign leading up to 2020? I hope not. 
But seeing enough of this repeat itself, I think that's going to be largely what ends up happening because the Democrats are going to dig in and try to advantage whoever becomes their candidate to go against President Trump, give that person the best opportunity they have to unseat President Trump in 2020. But look, we've got some really important issues to deal with. Whatever your position is on health care, that needs to get squared away however that needs to happen. The other thing that I've talked a lot about in my stories and I asked Senator Blunt about in our recent interview was what do we do about this long-term debt? Over $20 trillion that we the people owe. Our kids, our grandkids, their kids are going to owe this and the bill keeps piling up. No one, especially now because the economy's good, is worrying about this leaky roof. But it's about to cave in, if you think about it. That's almost 20 trillion, almost the size of our GDP for about a year and a half. All of the goods and services we produce in this country. It's a lot of money that we're going to owe. There needs to be a political solution to it. Same thing with so-called entitlement programs. Both parties have to come together. At some point, we have to be adults in the room and actually make some hard decisions for this country. And I'm afraid if we just have perpetual campaigning, we're never going to get to solving these problems. All right, thank you, Brian. We'll be right back after this.